This is an area where they will be having spin classes, they'll have Pilates classes, they'll have yoga classes here, but let me give you a full tour of this 6,000 square feet facility. But they do have one thing that they are positive about, this willow tree that they planted when they moved here about a year and a half ago. They're actually very happy that it survived Saturday night's tornado. It needed a bigger space to focus on more hands-on training. For example, in this area, each student will have a cubicle, which will let them do electrical work. Now, you said cold front, which is bad, but then sunshine, which is good. You, so. take, the, you take the good and the bad, and what do you have left? Yeah, all right. facts of life. That's right. Now, if you just take a look behind me, you can see that it's still a very active scene here. I want you to get a look at that car. The two men who were shot, they were in that car and after they were shot, the car crashed into the guardrail. Now, I'm outside of the Cedar Rapids Police Station where there are people right now protesting against the grand jury's findings. Now, they are holding signs that say justice for Danky. There's a new boat flood wall right here, and it is about 12 feet high, but this wall does not cover any of these businesses over here. As you can see, many of them are fending for themselves. Now, there are three people who are actually camping when the tornado hit, and the tornado knocked down several trees like the one I'm standing on right now. Oh, my God, he's trying to take it from me. Uh, no, no. Why do you think I feel somebody took it from me? I've had it for five months. Destiny Stucker, the woman in the red shirt here, spotted her stolen puppy and confronted the woman who had it. Can you let my dog go, ma'am? No, it's my dog. The two started tugging at the dog when the lady refused to give it back. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to touch her. I don't want to be the, the bad guy, but it's stolen property, and I just, I didn't want to lose him again. I just saw him yesterday. My dog. The woman with the puppy says she bought it from two men Monday for 150 bucks. The same day Stucker reported her dog missing. I understand she bought him from somebody, but it wasn't theirs to sell. After about 15 minutes of struggling, police showed up and confirmed the puppy was Tyson. The, the guy was the same one I had just talked to less than an hour before at PetSmart about a surveillance video of the same girl with my dog getting tags. No, they were just, just walking. The woman told police she didn't know the men who sold her the stolen pup. Ties, ties. Once Stucker got the dog back, reward for finding the dog. She paid back the woman's 150 bucks. It wasn't her fault the dog was stolen. She was innocent, and I'm not mad at her. I just wanted my dog. And she said she won't let Tyson out of her sight again. They're not going out of my view in this yard ever again. They're not going in the front yard without supervision. For Kenneth Hovenstadt, performing taps is the best way to give his final salute to fellow vets. It's mixed emotions every single time. Uh, just knowing what the what taps means and what it's for is a uh, it's a very sacred tune. But the former Marine still gets nervous. And you also hear the reaction from the family. You know, a lot of times you hear tears. You know, nobody starts crying at a funeral until right when you start hearing taps and it, it chokes us up even when we hear it for the 50th time or 100th time. But Hovenstadt you know, doesn't use a basic bugle. This goes inside of it. It's fake. Okay. There's a speaker inside the bugle that He's plays taps while he holds it to his mouth. That's actually really common. Even the reserve units, when they bring in a bugle, they use an electronic bugle too. There's always a need for buglers. We have three guys available for the Marion Legion, and we still don't have enough buglers. <laughs> Richard Bader plays the bugle, but prefers the trumpet. I like my trumpet better, as far as basically they make the same sounds. Hovenstadt says most people can't tell the difference, and it doesn't matter to them. And he doesn't think he will try playing a real bugle. It's a very specific skill set. Uh, I don't think I will learn, especially now that we've got this handy thing. Just grab a 9-volt battery and it works. An Eastern Iowa woman shot multiple times at a gas station is fighting to keep her shooter in prison. Brandon Gordon was charged with attempted murder, but pleaded down to a charge of willful injury causing serious injury. A judge sentenced Gordon to 15 years in prison. He served less than four. Police say Gordon shot at a vehicle in September of 2014 at the BP gas station on Center Point Road in Cedar Rapids. Gordon hit Kirsten Meyer, but he says he was aiming for a man that was in the car with her. She plans on reading a statement hoping to convince the parole board to keep Gordon behind bars. I've never received an apology from him, from his family. Kirsten Meyer you know. says the man who shot her has shown no remorse. She still feels the effects from the gunshots. My lungs aren't... Um, fully recovered. I go and do exercise and I feel like uh, it takes a lot more breathing. Meyer is still managing the feelings of the shooting three and a half years ago. She doesn't like talking about it, but is worried. I fear that 
he would want to re retaliate because I feel he doesn't think he did anything wrong and I've made it worse on him. I think shooting on a car seven times is pretty violent. Meyer is reading With part of her prepared statement for the parole board about, on Tuesday. I have every right to feel every right to say how I feel as a victim. Meyer regrets supporting Gordon's plea for a lesser charge. She didn't realize he could spend so little time in prison, even with the 15 year sentence. Our attorney had told us that, you know, it's up to him for, to go to trial. And I thought, okay, well, he must be telling the truth, but I should have pushed harder to go to trial. And I regret it very much to this day. Who gets shot at seven times and survives? Her mom, Michelle, has been her biggest supporter, but even she breaks down thinking about almost losing her daughter. Wondering how did people get that cruel? Just trying to protect myself from anger and trying to just not try to wrap my mind around someone that is that senseless and violent and vile. Meyer is prepared to go to every parole hearing Gordon has to make sure he serves his sentence. It's not okay to be violent. I just feel he's violent and he shouldn't be in society. The family reached out to the Lynn County Attorney's Office for help. The assistant county attorney tells me that they're not a party to parole board proceedings, so they can't fight it. But they can send a letter to them expressing a position on the hearings.